Welcome viewers to Historical Journeys. A drone is looking at the seabed hundreds of feet below the Atlantic Ocean surface, while the Aquino's explorer crew waits patiently for a glimpse of the deep. The stricken remains of a long-forgotten ship that has been washed ashore by the waves is all of a sudden visible, completely unanticipated object. The robot plumbed the Bay of Mexico is watery profundities and found a wreck apparently frozen in time. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It only takes a second, and you won't miss any of our future videos. Let's get started. Four days sooner, on May 12, 2019, a group of scientists from the Public Maritime and Environmental Organization, NOAA, went from Pascagoula and Mississippi to Key West, Florida. This 13-day expedition is intended to get explorers and their equipment ready for a busy 2019 schedule. Hence, the Aquinas Voyager was not prepared to direct complex logical exploration. Overall, everything went according to plan for the first few days of the mission. Then, at that point, on May 16, the pioneer Aquinas moved toward the Bank of Florida around 160 miles off the shore of the U.S. And here, near the edge of a giant seamount, the team decided to test their latest remote-controlled ROV. To retrieve the ROV, the Pioneer Aquino crew embarked on what is known as an engineering dive. One of three such missions, it allows researchers to fine-tune various aspects of the new technology. But when the drone, known as Profound Find, reached a depth of 1,640 feet, its sonar detected an unexpected wreck on the ocean floor. The crew of the ship, a Quinsky Expeditor, was surprised and ill-prepared to investigate such a discovery, and rushed to gather a group of marine archaeologists. Fortunately, NOAA has a long history of analyzing and classifying the ocean and everything in it. In 1970, these three organizations finally merged to form what is now known as NOAA in the 21st century. NOAA's mission is to develop a better understanding of our environment and to communicate this knowledge to the public. This may involve diving into our planet's oceans or following weather patterns to anticipate storms and long-term climate change. NOAA utilizes inventive innovation and cutting-edge hardware to gather information all over the planet. Furthermore, in 2004, it added one more leg to its bow as the Aquinas Pioneer a previous naval force transport changed over into an exploration vessel, initially named USNS Competent. However, following five years of administration, it was moved to NOAA, and the 224-foot vessel before long had all that its team expected to lead broad exploration on the planet's seas. After four years, in 2008, the boat was sent off as a NOAA research vessel under the new name Aquino's Voyager, and went through the following couple of years, venturing to the far corners of the planet concentrating on probably the most obscure spots in our seas. Today, Aquino has four pilgrims attempting to gather information from the seafloor. In the meantime, Loot looks beneath the surface, illuminates the group that he is pausing, and gets back to the boat. There are a wide range of devices that assist scientists with figuring out their discoveries. Throughout the long term, Aquino wayfarers have been engaged with numerous missions, including investigation, planning, and investigation. Aquino's wayfarer is a significant asset for NOAA and the remainder of the world. The group utilizes satellite innovation to communicate ongoing information, permitting specialists all over the planet to add their ability to different missions. For instance, in 2010, Aquino voyagers went to Indonesia's Sulo SEC, a neglected remote ocean, where they made the principal profound make a plunge the profound waters of Sulo. Secretary instruments on board the Aquino Voyager have uncovered 50 types of sea-going life already obscure to science. Starting around 2014, Aquino Voyagers have planned in excess of 386,000 square miles of sea depths, covering already unstudied regions. In point of fact, nearly every mission according to NOAA estimates, has contributed to our comprehension of the Earth and provided crucial data. 
Yet, marine variety isn't the main thing NOAA found through Lake Aquinas Wayfarer somewhere in the range of 2012 and 2014. Furthermore, in 2016, Aquinas wayfarers helped glimpse one more piece of American history among the northern Mariana Islands. These boats from Saipan and Tinian helped track down lost bombs during the Second Great War. Additionally, the families of the soldiers who had passed away years earlier paid the ultimate price for this mission. For sure, NOAA has a noteworthy history of uncovering the secrets of the sea. A submarine used sonar in May 2013 to search San Francisco Bay for a wrecked cargo ship. However, when the team dug deeper, they came across something even more unexpected. During the mission, James sends the NOAA authority to the team with the auxiliary target of recuperating the last remaining parts of the steamship SS City of Chester. Six minutes later, the 200-foot vessel sank beneath the waves after colliding with the RMS Marine near the San Francisco Bay mouth. Tragically, the sinking killed 16 individuals and dangers touching off ethnic pressures among nearby and Chinese mariners. At the point when the danger died down, San Franciscans failed to remember there was a wreck at the lower part of the inlet. Today, the well-known brilliant entryway scaffold traverses the ocean where the city of Chester falls. Yet, regardless of its unmistakable quality, the record remained unexamined for over 120 years. Six years after the revelation of the destruction of the city of Chester, NOAA has coincidentally found one more piece of remote ocean history, this time from the traveler Aquino's rocket. However, when remote ocean revelations started investigating the lower part of the Atlantic Sea, they found an enormous fortune lying on the seafloor. Seems to be the group hit a disaster area. But what about this enigmatic ship? which has vanished beneath the waves and has no experts or equipment to examine its findings. The most recent technology was used by Aquino's scouting team to discover information about their unexpected discovery in a series of emails. Aquino's expedition team was able to call together a group of marine archaeologists from all over the nation. They added an incredible encounter to the mission by watching the waterway of life from the lower part of the sea. By then, the group chose to broaden their plunge and endure three additional hours investigating the region and sounding while at the same time looking for the destruction. The robot caught pictures of the disaster area in higher goal than the photographs the Jews shipped off specialists on the ground, which they altered into visual pictures. However, it didn't take long for the gathering to study the flare-up. Authorities on the matter agree. The disaster area is the remaining parts of a wooden boat that was underlying the center of the 1900 years. The specialists had the option to appraise the age of the boat's development by concentrating on different highlights, taking a gander at the openings in the copper skin, as well as the state of the bow and stem and breaking down the remaining parts of vinegar. I came right away. Eventually, they verified that the boat was worked around 1850. Truth be told, Specialists accept that the boat had been cruising the oceans for around a decade after it was fabricated. The group viewed as a few iron and copper relics spread around the site. However, they could not advance anything about the indented vessel. Thusly, the data about the team, freight, identity, and so forth, isn't known. Unusual footage was captured by a drone camera at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, the number 2109 was composed to send off the rudder of a wreck. Be that as it may, what's the significance here? However, researchers haven't been able to figure out what caused the enigmatic code, and no one knows where the ship came from. Just the lower part of the boat remains. Truth be told, what we see is the lower part of the body of a wooden boat cruising in the sea. The upper part was gulped by marine organic entities since it was anything but a copper store. Nonetheless, he made sense of, the ocean life may not be the main variable included, yet the way that the wreck is a sad remnant of its previous life is something different. Authorities on the matter agree, a few trees have a consuming or consuming sensation. This suggests that the ship may have burned for a considerable amount of time prior to sinking into the water. If valid, this could make sense of why there is so little curios in the destruction. Under typical conditions, adventurers hope to track down indications of private property and indications of misrepresentation. 
However, the reconnaissance team was unable to locate Aquino. In the film, a specialist hypothesizes that the boat might have been purposely set ablaze. In the film, one of the group makes sense of, I've been doing this for nine and a half years, I actually need to track down submerged ships. Nonetheless, Noah's blunt cantler later made sense of that it might require investment for them to get back to the break and find out more, as profound water investigation is troublesome and costly. We don't have the foggiest idea when there will be another visit. Cantler told Newsweek in 2019 that the Guard Division wouldn't examine once more. In any case, Noah intends to deliver all the Quino Wanderer plunge information to people in general with the expectation that another exploration group will assume control over the work and assist with revealing the secrets of the baffling boat. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay updated with our latest videos, subscribing is the way to go. Just click that red button below and become a part of our channel family.